Welcome back to the Clickdown. I'm Steve Beals, and today, if you have ever used the Workspace app on your mobile phone or tablet device, this is going to be the episode for you. I'm being joined today by Manav John, a senior product manager here at Citrix, and we're going to dive into some questions regarding running the Workspace app on mobile and tablet devices. Manav, welcome. Thanks for joining the Clickdown. Hi, Steve. Uh, glad to be here. Thanks for yeah, having me. Yeah, I appreciate me. you jumping on. So I uh, I ask each of my guests this at the start of each show, just so we can kind of give uh, the listeners a little bit into who they're listening to uh, through their headphones or their uh, car stereo. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, your role here at Citrix. All right, sure. Uh, so I'm Manav. Uh, I joined Citrix this year in May. Um, I, you know, I, I joined from McAfee and I've worked with a lot of product companies in the past um, in the entertainment media space as well. And I've worked on web SaaS products, platform products and mobile products. And over here, I'm bringing my experience with uh, mobile products and tablet products. So uh, I, I look after HDX, which is, you know, the, the cornerstone of Citrix, um, our class leading technology when we're virtual, virtualizing apps and desktops on both mobile and tablets. So this is across, you know, iPads, Android tablets, iPhones, Android phones. So all of that mobile ecosystem, uh, I'm responsible for essentially what you see once you get into the, get into your VDI or get into your published app. So mainly the work that you're actually doing after you log on and, you know, sign into the workspace. Awesome. So, so that's my responsibility. Awesome. So now everyone knows and they can come and, and, and complain to you if there's issues, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm definitely here to, you know, take on any customer issues and any complaints that users are having. Great. Hopefully not. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So so when I think about Citrix Workspace app and running it on like a mobile phone or a, or a tablet, so I'm an, I'm an iPhone user, right? I, I used to be an iPad guy, uh, but I don't have that anymore. Uh, but I, I, I tend to t- look at this in, you know, use case wise in two buckets. The first is where I kind of place myself, right? So I'm a person and I have Workspace app installed on my mobile phone. And I really use it if I'm able to be at like my desk or if I don't have a laptop in front of me and I need to to get on to something and, and need to check something, right? Be it something maybe in our, you know, we, we use Workday if it's something in there or if I need to check something else, right? Um, the other yeah. bucket I kind of think about is how some customers I used to work with when I was in the field um, use tablets for um, a mobile workforce. And, you know, they provided these tablets as almost a laptop replacement um, so that they could run virtual apps and, you know, even sometimes desktops uh, for these users while they were either meeting with customers or traveling. Um, so while, while you're like working with customers and discussing things with customers, is this, you know, typically what you also see? Like, how do you like differ the use cases from uh, mobile versus tablets? Yep, exactly. So I, I'd say, um, you know, our experience, our experience with customers, the features that we, um, you know, like to develop and the strategy that we have as well, uh, pretty much falls in line with what you mentioned, right? So. We've got a lot of customers that are using tablets and are increasingly looking at tablets as viable options for essentially like replacing any kind of traditional form factor like a desktop or a laptop. Uh, they just want one device for their uh, employees, for their you know end users, and that can handle all sorts of different use cases. Uh, you could be on the go. You could be you know potentially in the field, in a manufacturing industry, in logistics space, in healthcare. Uh, so for all of these, um, you know, on in-field activities where you need to work securely on your DAS environment, uh, Citrix is there on whichever tablet that you're using. Most of our users are on iPad and um, relatively smaller number on Android, but we support both uh, both these uh, platforms essentially. And then if I split it, um, you know, apart uh, from this uh, tablet user base, we also have a significant chunk of users on mobile so uh, on mobile, the, the use cases are more, as you also you know mentioned, um, specifically about performing some quick actions. They want to check some information quickly. We've got a, a perfectly usable DAS experience on mobile as well. We've got you know uh, features built in like a pointer mechanism that allows you to specifically highlight actions that you want to do on your VDM or on a published app. So that end user experience is there. 
and you can be productive even while you're uh, let's say you know commuting while you're outside while you're while you need to quickly check something when you're not specifically in office or anything like that so we support those use cases and uh, we also support um, you know the saas apps that we have uh, so users can have saas apps published onto the their workspace they can use published apps like desktop class apps and they can use bdi as well so um our our use case uh, range ranges from these tablets as primary devices a lot of traction that we see in banking industries from higher level execs who just want to use one device for essentially all of their work as well as uh, having a phone with workspace on there you want to check something quickly in a secure environment perform certain actions uh we've got you covered there as well awesome yeah it's it, it's interesting cuz i and i also know obviously with like the iphone 15 and everything uh chris fleck who's uh obviously well known in the citrix verse and, and in our in our bu you know had th- thrown out a video a few weeks back when he got an iphone 15 and was showing it connected to a monitor and everything else so i assume that's something else we're we're, we're probably you know looking at as a future use case as well right so um yeah yep yep definitely so uh our uh more recently especially with this and the advancement with iPhone 15 as well as uh you know Samsung Dex being capable of having a desktop mm-hmm. class experience just right straight from their mobile phone uh mobile as a backup device is uh, another category of use case we're looking at as well so over here uh we have interest on in this area from you know arm forces customers uh um, forces personnel you know they're out in the field they're using their uh you know high quality uh, for now samsung device and in the future uh, uh, apple device as well uh, they they want to perform all sorts of uh, you know secure actions on that device as well as when they are close to a docking station they just want to get the desktop quality experience so we have that use case in the back of my our minds and we you know we want to develop that for awesome. us well. yeah we've come we've come a long way right i mean it, it it's crazy like thinking about like when i hear like docking stations and everything it brings me back to having a big old thick laptop and plugging it into a docking station so it's it, it, it's yep. crazy so when when you think about our customers and and, and the, all these use cases you know what what's really the strategy for delivering the value to them on mobile or tablets Yep so i think the the strategy on our side um really falls in uh, perfect sync with the use cases that we see as well uh the main driver for us on the edgex side i would say is providing a desktop quality experience on tablet as well as on phone uh, now tablets are very viable as primary devices mm-hmm. nowadays we've really made some advancements in the peripheral space uh, supporting different capabilities expanding you you know by external monitors and so on so we really want to uh keep de- delivering keep enhancing that experience we are pretty much almost there with most of the main peripherals now being supported on tablets so tablets as a primary device is a big driver for us um i think the second driver that has come in a lot of attention recently uh based on our interactions with customers and partners is a mobile as a companion device so essentially we want you to be able to perform certain you know um vdi management actions like starting your session disconnecting your session using workspace app as a secure authenticator it can be used as a companion camera for your mm-hmm. mac device if you have an iphone uh, so we essentially want to build on these companion use cases showcase to customers that you know when you have the uh, workspace app installed on your phone it could be a managed or a bring your own device uh it enhances your productivity it makes it easier for you to get the job that you're looking to do get it done so we want to build a bit on those um uh, on that front of our overall strategy within mobile as well and i think the third uh, pillar for us is mobile as a backup device so as i mentioned we have a, a completely functional uh, productive experience using dash on mobile uh with the discussion that we recently had with iphone 15 and you know samsung deck devices Uh, they are viable desktop replacement devices or will soon uh, be in mm. that space so we want to make sure that we support any specific use case that can take advantage of that it could be you know just using a single device for everything for execs it could be any arm for personnel using a secure mobile communications device for 
you know, a desktop quality experience. Yeah, I, 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 it's it's funny, you know, years and years ago, I used to take a train into New York City every day for, for work. And I wish this was all around then <laughs> because it would have made my life so much easier. Um, so, yep. Um, and, you know, go ahead. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but just, uh, uh, you know, with, with the improvements that we're making in um, uh, optimizing audio, video, uh, working on lower bandwidth uh, connections as well. Uh, you know, even if you're on the go, like you're commuting, uh, even if you have a mobile data uh, connection, that'll still work and you'll still be able to get you right. know, your work done. So if you're ever in a fix, then, you know, we want to uh, be able to cover our Absolutely. users. Absolutely. That's great to hear. So obviously walking around with one of these devices, right, and, and, and getting into, you know, corporate data obviously could potentially, you know, uh, you know, a user could have access to critical data and that may be a worry for many customers. Um, so how are we looking at improving security for, for these types of uh, scenarios? Right, sure. Uh, so I think uh, security is, you know, one of our strongest suites uh, across Citrix. We really promise that factor whenever we're, um, you know, showcasing customers our value. Uh, on the mobile side, it's it's really important um, I would say that compared to desktop devices, when you're pitching for uh, usage on a tablet device, that, that can be you know essentially mobile in a physical sense as well. We want to keep security in mind uh, and make sure that you know users are covered. They can do their work without any any worries or hesitations, and they know they're in a secure environment. So I would you know point out a few features that we recently introduced, worked on to enhance the security factor uh, and enhance the secure experience for our users. Uh, we have recently added support for TLS 1.3. This is a newer um, encryption protocol uh, for making you know, any kind of connection, um, internet connection or otherwise as well. It uses a modern range of ciphers. The handshake is quicker uh, and you know, it's essentially future proofing our mm -hmm. solution. So a lot of internet, um, most of the internet base is still on TLS 1.2, but a lot of our uh, security forces customers have been asking for this feature just to future-proof themselves as well as part of whatever they use, um, software being compliant with that standard. So we've uh, we've been one of the first platforms across the Citrix BU to, to launch this feature with, uh, within Android and iOS. Uh, another feature I would point towards is uh, we've made some improvements in making sure sensitive fields are not captured on Android devices. So this was a customer asked recently that came up. We analyzed you know, what we could do in terms of leveraging Android provided password saving or you know keyword saving capabilities, and making sure the option is there for users as well as for admins to uh, disable that setting, so that you know any kind of action that you perform within the VDI is essentially you know not recorded, not captured, and um, it's essentially anonymous. So you can be absolutely worry free about any data being stored on there. And uh, a couple of other features that I would point to is we've recently updated a lot of codec libraries. Uh, in terms of what we are using. So when you do that, um, any kind of vulnerabilities vulnerabilities that have been identified in a previous version, we essentially pass that. We've done this for both audio and video codecs re recently. Uh, we try to stay um, at the forefront uh, in terms of these updates to make sure that you know our products are uh, completely up to date, they're secure, security compliant. Any of that vulnerability that is found, we quickly pass that up uh, via these codec updates. And essentially, we provide a secure audio and video experience to our users through through these updates. Uh, and finally, I would also add uh, the fact that uh, uh, we we are looking at screenshot mm -hmm. prevention on Android via system providers APIs. So that that is something that's on our roadmap for the future. Uh, we're building it on the pre-launch side right now. Uh, we would be looking to explore that option on the iOS front as well. Uh, as a bit of a stopgap to eventually hopefully bringing app protection on mobile, but we want to allow that kind of feature and that kind of security for our users. That's awesome. as well. So that's a feature that's on our oh, own. That's account. awesome. Yeah. That's great. 
Uh, performance, right? That's always always a top priority. You mentioned it as well too, with you know with the you know connections that people have in in various you know spots around the world. Um, so you know, I, I kind of think about you know if if I'm a professional and I'm on you know a train or if I'm you know in an airport, wherever it may be, and maybe I'm not on Wi-Fi and you know I'm connecting to an app or desktop and I, I need it to perform, right? Like as you know as we were saying before. Um, so so how are we going about improving? Um, you know, in session performance for, you know, these types of situations or other, you know, low data type of uh, situations. Yep. Yep. Definitely. So uh, I think as you mentioned, right. Uh, uh, working in low data scenarios is quite important for us. So, you know, that essentially puts the question towards efficiency in terms of performance over low bandwidth connections as well. I think the best way or our strategy on that front has to be to adapt whatever is uh, works best for users across a whole range of connections. So whether you're on a you know high-speed Wi-Fi connection or you're on a low-speed mobile data connection, uh, we want you to be able to do modern um, you know computing, modern employee mm -hmm. experience like uh, Teams audio calls, video calls, anything like that. Uh, so we try to update and you know support get the data support from a codec front. We've recently introduced um, adaptive audio. Over on Android, it's soon to be released. We've started work on the same on the iOS front as well. Uh, so uh, apart from improving our security value by updating these codecs, we also target these performance improvements whenever we go for them. Uh, on the Android front, we've recently released full screen H.264 support, which uses hardware decoding capability that's found on a lot of modern phones and tablets. Uh, using that, if you have a GPU enabled VDA, you can you know reach speeds up to 60 FPS which was not possible via the legacy thin wire implementation. So if, you, if you're in a you know, um, CGI heavy, um, 3D computer generation heavy, or like a video heavy mm -hmm. use case for your customers, uh, that's, that, that, those kinds of features will really benefit. We, we're planning to move towards the same kind of common code graphics approach on iOS uh, platforms as well. And uh, I would say, um, bringing it back towards um, the desktop class experience that we want users to have when they're using especially tablet devices as their primary device. Uh, we've recently introduced support for external webcams when Apple has launched this feature on iOS 17. That feature is in check preview now. Uh, you know, users are contacting us about getting a chance to uh, demo that feature, test it out. Uh, we support a whole range of, you know, peripherals like keyboard, mice, webcam as i mentioned external monitors as well so uh, whenever we uh, whenever we introduce these peripherals we want to enhance the overall desktop quality experience um, whether you're using a docking station or not you can connect all these devices and then um, get this kind of uh, desktop level experience for your users external webcam has been a feature that we have recently worked on on the ios front it's in development on android as well so we're trying to keep feature parity across these two platforms and, you know, these are the features that we have been working on to get the best experience for our users for modern computing and, you know, employee needs. Exciting time. So, so when, when you get these requests and everything, like, are, you know, are you talking to the customers or, you know, are there specific, um, you know, engagement events that you, you're, you've done recently that, you know, maybe some of these requests come in through? Yep, definitely. So, I would say uh, we have a you know highly engaged customer base, especially uh, a number of our large customers are very much in mm -hmm. sync with us. Uh, we have regular catch-ups with them via our you know very efficient and very active ATS networks, sales networks within Citrix. So we we engage regularly with our large-scale partners and customers. Um, our marketing team, with your help as well, has been very active in promoting some of the new features that we have built up. Uh, we have been, you know, very active on writing uh, blogs for these new features for the day zero support that we del delivered on both Android 14 and iOS 17. And uh, a big event that we recently did across uh, the Bangalore office with the help of a number of teams was a partner labs event. So we had called up um, some of our significant customers and par partners, a lot of them uh, whose IT teams are based out of Bangalore. Uh, we invited them in person for an event. We showcased via, you know, practical hands-on demos, some of the features that we have been working on and some of the features that are in progress. They are in, in you know, very private tech reviews. 
but just giving our partners and customers an inside peek on into you know what's coming up and we that that's an opportunity for us to interact in person with our customers and partners we got a lot of feedback from them it was helpful to see you know uh, their awareness levels on the features that we are building what is the user rate for you know mobile products within their organizations and essentially just see them in action see them if uh, observe and you know showcase uh, sure. the usability of the products uh, try to get any feedback on user input on that front awesome. as well. do do we have the same sort of or do you have the same sort of types of conversations with like apple or samsung on you know hey this is what we're working on um you know we know you have a workspace app this is some of the features we're coming out with you have the same sort of conversation with them as well yeah uh, definitely so i think uh, we've been seeing a lot of uh, good amount of traction on the iOS front, Apple has been, uh, you know, uh, pretty much winning a lot of experiences for different types of customers. And we have been there uh, essentially interfacing at times for Apple, with Apple, providing a, you know, a unified approach for the customer. Uh, we have, you know, we've got uh, very, uh, very specific, very intricate connections with Apple. We use custom APIs, so we have a very good working relationship with them. And we've le leveraged that kind of relationship in developing really proprietary and unique mm -hmm. experiences for users. So if we talk about iPhone 15, the fact that X1 mouse is, you know, the usual mouse that yep. you have, external mouse that you have for that device right now, that's like a, a, a product of that kind of collaboration, similar with Samsung um, and, you know, similar with Google as well. So we, we do rely on those kinds awesome. of partnerships to drive uh, unique experiences. Good to hear. All right. So I, I guess the last question I have is really around what's, what, what's next, right? What does the future hold for, you know, Workspace app on uh, mobile and tablets? And are there any specific items that, you know, we, you haven't touched on that maybe we're, we're targeting? Yep. I think uh, the future is pretty exciting. Um, you know, I would focus on the fact that you can now use your phone to get a full desktop class experience um, on both of the platforms that we're looking at. Uh, that's really exciting. A lot of our users are interested in that. Uh, and not just from, uh, you know, uh, just like a theoretical perspective, they actually want to see that in action. They want to understand the viability of that. They want to potentially go for a very low total cost mm -hmm. of ownership and just give you know one mobile device to their users and see what they can achieve with that. Uh, we're looking at, you know, AR and VR solutions as well. So we would be looking to add support for Apple Vision Pro. Um, we're in talks with, uh, uh, you know, an AR provider on the Android front as well. Um, so we want to, you know, look at these modern kinds of form factors and solutions uh, with mobile. It's a very exciting area to be in. And then it allows us this opportunity to tar target, you know, newer kinds of markets that we haven't been able to explore right now. But it gives a very flexible foothold. That's uh, that's. Uh, you know, what I would say is one of the strengths of the mobile space. And, you know, finally, while we're talking about form factors, foldable phones have been uh, have started mm -hmm. becoming very popular. They're getting traction on the Android front. Most of the main manufacturers like, you know, Samsung, Motorola, OnePlus, they have their foldable devices. So that's a, a segment that we are targeting very highly, you know, in use by execs uh, uh, in terms of these devices. So. Apart from achieving, you know, feature parity versus other platforms and, uh, you know, building up on this customer satisfaction and, you know, optimizing the experience that we have already got with features that we have for our devices. These are some of the exciting areas that we are looking Great. at. Great. Any, any chance of Teams optimization on any of these devices? Yep. So I think uh, once we get to uh, a good stage with, uh, with respect to feature parity and, uh, just building on the efficiency that we have with codec support, both on audio and video, we want to be able to make sure that, you know, our users have a good experience across any kind of platform that they're using for AV. Uh, we would definitely, you know, uh, keep that in mind. And it, it's it's definitely on our radar, uh, but just not at the same time. Well, you know, I, I thank you for joining me today and taking the time out of your day. Um, you know, I'm glad to hear that, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're continuing to look at expanding our our workspace app on these uh on these form factors and it sounds like you're going to be very busy over the next uh next uh months and, and years hopefully to come uh, but it does sound like there's a lot to be excited about in this area uh, so that that wraps things up for today um, as always thank you for listening and this has been the click down